Administrators have lifted the lid on what went wrong with Clive Palmer's Queensland nickel refinery, exposing hundreds of millions of dollars siphoned off to related companies. The money went on golf courses, his Coolum resort, planes and vintage cars, while taxpayers foot the bill for sacked workers. It was, administrators say, Clive Palmer's personal piggy bank. You name it, Queensland Nickel bought it. His Coolum Resort for eight million, a plane for five, three golf courses, a resort on the Gold Coast, and much more. Sixty vintage cars were listed on Queensland Nickel books as a major capital purchase. Between 2010 and 2016, Queensland Nickel's fortunes flowed into Palmer's other companies and interests. $122 million for mineralogy, Palmer Leisure, aviation, $6 million for the Titanic, while Queensland Nickel slowly went down the gurgler, taking with it 700 jobs. It has got some damning uh, uh, business practices that are outlined. Uh, it's very concerning. Palmer and the relative he had running Queensland Nickel are singled out for special mention. Both Mr Mensink and Mr Palmer appear to have been reckless, they say. In six months before administrators moved in, the company spent close to $260 million, $189 million in loans forgiven for director-related companies. It was a familiar story for Queensland Nickel to pay for Palmer's empire and have the debt written off as a gift, including the $21.5 million given to his political party, more than a quarter of the amount raised by all other political parties put together. Mr Palmer and Mr Mensink have had their hands all over these, uh, the transactional history in Q&I, not just in the last several months, but over the last several years. Next week, Queensland Nickel will be put into liquidation, triggering federal laws to ensure $74 million owed to Palmer's workers is paid. That will put the federal government first in line to get its money back from suing Clive Palmer and potentially selling off all the things Queensland Nickel has bought for him. That's in addition to any actions the Australian Securities Commission might take. As for the federal MP, political playmaker and business shaker, he's yet to comment on the report, except to deny responsibility, Clive Palmer says. It's not his fault. So I know Clive Palmer controls nearly everything, but he doesn't control the whole world commodity market. Shane, what else have administrators had to say about the nickel plant? Well, Melissa, they say it's worth $5 billion as an asset, but they have some concerns about its environmental management, repairs and maintenance not done. Just fixing one of the tailings dams will cost $12 million, and yet Queensland Nickel gave $4.5 million to something called the Club de Madrid and the World Economic Council, whose membership includes Mr Masink, Clive's son Michael, and as Secretary General, Clive Palmer himself. Mr Palmer's known to enjoy suing people as a hobby. Most expect this will end up as the trial or trials of the century. We'll Melissa? See. All right, Shane, thank you. Phil Wilmington is in Townsville. Phil, how's the community reacting to this news? Well, Melissa, there's a real sense of anger among workers following today's revelations, the findings of that, that, that are contained in that administrator's report. But there's an element of trepidation as well. I spoke to one of the QN ex-workers a short time ago on the phone. He wished to remain anonymous. He said that so many of the workers are still afraid to speak out publicly about what's been happening because they fear that Clive Palmer will go after them through the courts. But I'm told there is a very real welcome for the recommendation by the uh, the the administrators to place the company into liquidation because at least that provides the trigger for those workers to gain access for their those worker entitlements through the federal government fund and certainly that's the view of the mayor of Townsville Jenny Hill here's what she had to say I want the federal government to provide the entitlements guarantee as quickly as possible for these people so they can move on with their lives and the big decision day will be in the casino here in Townsville, that big building behind me, Friday week on the 22nd of April, when the creditors will meet to decide, Melissa, whether to accept that recommendation to liquidate. All right. Thanks, Phil.